Well hello, a new quad came through today and it's one I tried to get hold of a while ago and wasn't able to get, but it eventually came through. You can see from the nice little picture, it's a Fury B. And if you were looking around the right way, which I can't see in the camera lens, it is the Dark Max. What's so special about the Dark Max? It's mainly the fact, aside from the fact it's quite low cost, pretty good flying quad, it can take a 6S. Crazy stuff. So um, let's get it out of the box. Wrapped up quite nicely and comes quite well configured. A single unibody plate here, which is, I think it's three mil, and all the screws here are recessed, so it's nice and smooth to be able to fit your battery to or whatever. It's got one of these great big lenses again, like on the B Flight, or B Fight. These are DYS 2205-2550 KVs. One thing we have got in here is this tiny little Aurora RC receiver. Now, normally I would say our flight default um, I'll see how it goes, if it falls out of the sky it's not too much of a problem, but because the field is just solid mud at the moment, this thing might completely disappear if it went down. So I'm actually going to swap that out, I think, with a FreeSky XM Plus, just to make sure there's no hassle, because when you're dealing with something fast, it can go away quickly, it can go out of its own range very quickly, and on the B-Fight, the re receiver that came with it, it was like less than 200 metres away when I got fail safe and it fell out of the sky. Might have been a dodgy one, but with this tiny little antenna here, half buried in this carbon, I, I just don't trust that, so I'm going to swap it. So the other stuff you get in the box, two pairs of Genfan props, these are 5152, free bladed. Some instructions, quite nice because it details both the flight controller and the VTX, how the VTX module works, how the camera works, it's got a 2.5mm lens, and how you do the setup for your receiver and beta flight, all quite good. Two of these battery straps that I don't like, because although you can thread through, you can't get any pressure to go back the other way. I like this, this is new. It's one of these silicon pads that if, instead of a, a piece of Velcro, you put that on and the battery creates such friction against it, it shouldn't slip. I like that. Some screws for, I don't know, some screws, probably for the body. This wire and connector, which I'm gonna assume is, if you want to put your own receiver on, perhaps, maybe, or something, I don't know. A spanner for helping you take the props off. Though often I find that it's not getting the spanner done, it's being able to hold onto the motor, especially with the shape of some of these props, it's quite hard. And finally, this little antenna. I actually thought they sent the wrong one, because if we put this right angle antenna on, you get this, which I thought was wrong. That's your picture and it was fine. Of course, you'll be flying like this most of the time, and that's not bad. But um, I shall probably put a skew on there, I think. I might fly with this first, just to see how it goes, and then swap it over. It's kind of nice, all sort of black and demon looking, when it's going to be, hopefully, really fast, really crazy. Now, I haven't got any 5 or 6S batteries, so I'll go 4S initially, and then I might put two 3Ss in series to make 6S, just to see what happens. It sounds crazy big, though. But that's, you know, I think that's one of the problems with this. Um, I think other people found that the 5S was maybe the sweet spot because as soon as you went up to 6S, the weight versus the extra power wasn't as good as the, quite, not quite as much extra power on 5S, but the weight was better. So we'll see. Anyway, let's get this up on beta flight. Let's change the receiver out and let's get it built. So just a few bits in beta flight to talk about. It's running uh, 320 with uh, an omnibus f4 sd version the main thing to say is that it was set up wrong when i got it um serial rx was set to uart1 and this is what the instructions tell you to do didn't work it's actually on uart6 which corresponds to the actual diagram where they've they've labeled where you plug in sbus as rx6 so that made sense but out of the box didn't work configuration wise all pretty standard d shots running and it's an 8k 2k gyro and PID. Um, PID wise I just upped my super rates to 0.8, I'm leaving everything else default. Receiver wise the only change I made was to add my RSSI channel and I'd flashed the RSSI version of the XM Plus firmware. I set my own modes up, uh, arm, angle and beeper with air mode as an option and finally set my OSD as I wanted it to the only other thing is in the CLI, I set set small angle to 180. 
Yeah, but the main thing is to be wary of um, which UART they've used. Now, my one was wrong. Odds on, they, <laughs> they've they probably changed this around. I'm often finding these ready-to-fly quads or allegedly ready-to-fly quads set up wrong, but not necessarily wrong in the same way as everybody else's, so just be aware. Okay, the Dark Max is ready. We had to go for black props. It's like black on black on black. With the number of quads seeming to become purple and pink and everything here, it's kind of... I'd say it was fresh. It's not really fresh. It's kind of old school, if you like. It's kind of like, you know, demonic looking. At least it lives up to the name Dark Max, doesn't it? Maximum darkness. The change I've got here is obviously I've got the uh, FreeSky um, XM Plus installed, so I've got the antennas here. I've also got a proper battery strap here, which does up. My advice to anybody here is put that strap in when you have it apart. It's They've soldered... Um, all the ACs down below and you've got no space to put that through um, and you need to take it apart anyway I had to get the camera out in order to set WDR on because it was off um, I'll take along uh, a skew as well I'll fly with this one see what it's like but we'll have a, an option to change it and uh, if all goes well there I'll have my little GoPro ready to to mount on the little thing there and see how that goes but yeah let's get made then well here we are in the field uh, a bit windy but generally gorgeous day. I should just explain for my overseas friends that being British it's literally our job to talk about the weather at least once in every conversation. Yeah, despite the cold weather we're getting some lovely clear days which is making my life easier because at least go out and fly. I'd take this any day over grey and dingy. Anyway, so we got the uh, Dark Max ready. I was just looking at my bag and that frame really does feel quite big. The battery fits on easily. Anyway, normal stuff. I'm going to have a quick line of sight hover to see it works and then we'll take it out and try FPV. That certainly seems to go okay. A lot of power. to go up. <laughs> it doesn't want to go along. Anyway, let's land it. Let's get the goggles on. Might need some throttle expo. The difference between up and down is quite thin. So off we go with the maiden flight, just with the DVR recording here. And I quickly noticed a couple of things. The camera does seem to wash out a little bit. It's sort of getting overexposed there in this light. Quite uh, tricky light conditions for the camera because the sun really doesn't get much above the horizon at the moment in the UK. But, uh, you know, it does okay. It's just a little bit washed out, I find. The other thing I noticed is that the default camera angle wasn't really up enough. So I'm trying to get some, some speed here, but I can't get enough sort of lean forward to get higher speed without just viewing the grass so it's kind of a bit of a meander to the end of the field. The other significant thing that happened during this flight is I'm halfway through flying and I hear what can only be described as a big dog barking and those barks getting closer with a woman shouting behind let that man get on with his droning which is an interesting verb. Anyway the dog pretty much came right up to me jumped up and down I hear him jumping all over my stuff but I can't do much about it and I don't really want to land because you know I don't want to spook him and, and upset him further by putting a quad right next to him so that was interesting one of the things of course because I had the camera at the wrong angle and it, it made me fly about quite gently I got a lot longer than normal I, mean, I actually had this as on minutes instead of fly minutes but I still managed a five minute flight with plenty of battery left instead of a four minute flight well that went okay. The, the biggest problem for me was that dog that decided to jump all over my stuff, jumped all over there, knocked my glasses over. That took an hour ages to find. It was like Scooby-Doo watching Daphne try and find hers. Quad-wise, flew okay, didn't have enough speed, didn't have enough angle on the camera, so let's pump that up a bit. I might as well stick the GoPro on while we're there, because it had plenty of power. Try again, battery number two. Okay, so this is the first flight with the GoPro on board. I've upped the camera angle, so it's about the same as the GoPro. The default little mount point for the GoPro seems about right. 
My only issue with the GoPro mount as it is, is I couldn't slide a proper thick uh, battery strap around it. So I had to use one of those little horrible thin ones in the box. So it wasn't quite on as tight as I wanted it to. And that's contributing a little bit to some of the shakes. There is a little bit of oscillation as the quad drops down for its own prop wash. And if it hits a bit of turbulence, it's a bit wobbly. But generally, it seems pretty solid and pretty smooth. So I think I could get a much smoother HD picture by getting a, a better battery strap in place there. So on this first GoPro flight, I'm just checking it sort of feels okay. And I do a couple of little jumps over the, the hedge here to, to do some rolls and stuff just to make sure I've got the sort of the speed right and make sure it doesn't feel too heavy and it all feels pretty good so my idea here was to come down and get uh, the next battery and fly a little bit more confidently but um, things didn't quite go as expected I, I flew along here and then suddenly down it went well that looked like a, an innocuous little crash it seemed to lose signal and I think it might be stress on this connector here, that's where the S bus signal goes into the receiver. Uh, I had a couple of times where I powered up and then it looked like it wasn't connected and suddenly you hear this beep and it was. Obviously that just went mid-flight and took it down. Despite the small little crash there, the uh, GoPro, my GoPro session, got its, its back of it absolutely peeled off somehow. It must have got caught in something. It just came off like a banana skin. Uh, I should be able to bend that back and, and glue it back on. It, it seems fine and it's working anyway. But it's so curious, yeah. It's just literally sticking out of it like that. Okay, well, I've just stripped this down to try and find the problem. And I've taken the shrink wrap off here so I can see it easy. I've got my radio on, so if I just turn on. We've got the green light there, which I hope you can see. But if I just give this a little bit of, oh, it's gone out again, and it's gone red and green, so I don't really have to give it any pressure. <laughs> it is not very good. Green there, so if we arm, spin these, and let's pretend to be a little bit of vibration. It's gone. Let me get it back. Yeah, so it doesn't take much to uh, get it. And that's gone complete now. And obviously just that would continue to fatigue. What this doesn't have, looking at the uh, instructions here, is any solder points apart from RX3 there, but you still need to run ground and five volts somewhere else. I'd prefer, you know, nice free solder pads to do, but they had a spare one of these in a the box, so I'll at least try using this one to see if it's any better uh, and redo this so I can retest it. Okay, so here's the resoldered one, and the, it actually feels a lot more solid in there. So let's try this out and see if we get some success. And that's happily bound. I'm just going to stick it in air mode quickly and see if I can make it fail by giving it little tugs. Well, that seems pretty good. Don't want to stop. I'm going to try again now. <laughs> so I'm out again in the field just to check that receiver's okay. So perhaps not surprisingly, I'm again flying first battery with out of GoPro just to really, you know, chuck it around the field, make sure nothing goes funny. It, it does seem okay now. And you might be wondering why I was flying if I had this apparent problem that I detected. And it's kind of also consistent with having your receiver a little bit close to your transmitter where the transmitter can sort of overload the receiver. So I actually thought it was that. So I didn't actually think I had too much of a problem there at first, but it kind of fitted in later when we did have the issue. It is absolutely freezing today. So if the flying's a bit shonky, it's because I could barely feel any sticks under my thumbs, which made it tricky. Um, I did land that one and I got the GoPro on. Um, it still works, it just the back just peeled off and we had a bit of a GoPro flight. I, I really 
didn't quite feel I had enough of a flight on that first day to, you know, have a, a, a full opinion about it. So I wanted to get out and at least do a few more batteries just to make sure, you know, I had a, a, a proper decent amount of batteries through before I had an opinion on this one. And yeah, it's a pretty good smooth ready to fly quad. It's got a little couple of wobbles there, which I think could do with a little bit of fine tuning. But generally speaking, it, you know, it's going really nicely out of the box here. I actually did have um, a few more batteries to fly, but it was just so... C I, I'm sorry to whinge on about the cold, but I was ill-prepared for it. I had gloves, and in between flying, I put my gloves on, I put my hands in my pockets, and I just could not warm my hands up. And the flying at the end of this battery was starting to get so shonky, I thought, nah, there's no point in this, I I'd better go. It does mean I want to go back and, and do a little bit more. But generally speaking, the cameras pretty nice there's no distortions on the camera it's fairly good at it you know it's light handling and stuff and the quad certainly got plenty of power and it you know it spins rolls brilliantly it's got a good climb rate it's you know it's a good all-round quad I think the Fury B brand's doing really nice at the moment some great quads out there uh, and another good ready to fly one I say ready to fly I'm gonna class these ready to fly as almost ready to fly because there's a few problems to fix. Take away, throw away the little receiver that comes with it, put a decent one in, correct the UART. And I mean, we had a bigger problem this time with this connector here causing a crash and stripping my poor GoPro of its back there. But despite it trying to kill the GoPro, I actually really like this. I think there's some more tuning to do. There was a little bit of jitter and wobble as it was coming down for any sort of prop wash or getting a little bit of turbulence, it seemed a little bit jittery, so there's some stuff to play with there. So it's not quite um, the normal, I say the normal, it doesn't quite let you do default PIDs flight and it would be amazing, but it does a pretty good job and I don't think there's too far to go. It reminded me a little bit of the uh, the B-Fight 210, despite being a different manufacturer. Both, I would say, could be flown absolutely as your first quad despite this having the potential to use a big battery, lower this camera, you um, tune your rates right down and it goes around quite happily. I mean, I got over five minutes from my first flight because I couldn't get enough forward momentum going with the camera as it was. It could always do a slightly wider angle lens, I think. It was still a little bit tricky landing with about this sort of 30-ish degree, but not too bad. But if you are looking for your first quad, um, Take a look at the, I mean, the price changes, it seems, daily on Gearbest. This is actually quite a lot more at the moment than the B-Fight. The B-Fight, I felt, flew nicer out of the box. Uh, needed a couple of little mods to put the GoPro on as it doesn't have the same amount of space there. But it's significantly cheaper and flies very nicely. This, I think, has a lot more potential. The fact you can put a much more powerful battery on, you can scream it along at a fair old rate. Uh, there's a little bit more weight to it, a little bit a little bit heavier, a little bit more mass, but I think still a good freestyle and uh, little racing platform. I did try to put a 6S battery through, and I even filmed the intro in the field, but then I found that my series connector had a dodgy pin and wouldn't connect, and my thumbs were already numb. So I'll be back to fly that, and uh, maybe sort out some of these pids, see what I can do. But uh, until this time, thanks for Gearbest for sending this, this is of course the Dark Max from Fury B and the link is down below in the description as usual if you want to check it out on their site. But I'll see you in the next video, bye for now.